Hey guys, Becca Switzer with Roof Sales Mastery, and we're going to talk a little bit about appropriate and productive adjuster negotiations. And uh, there's really a couple main points, I guess, that I want to talk about with this today. But by now, you guys probably have learned that being a dick to an adjuster is not going to get you anywhere, okay? We have the video about, you know, you attract more flies with honey than with vinegar. And so we're going to kind of talk about that a little bit more here today. But the first thing that I'd like to bring up is remember that when you're working with adjusters, you're working with people, okay? This is a people business. And people, whether they're customers or adjusters or your competition or whatever, they're still people and people are going to react the same no matter what their title or their job or their position is, okay? So do not expect to be abrasive, rude, demanding, and really just mean to an adjuster and then expect to get them to play ball with you. Like that's just not gonna happen. And so many contractors unfortunately treat adjusters that way that we already ha have kind of a bad reputation going in to an adjuster interaction. So even though you might be doing things right and you're really cool, just remember that the first time you approach an adjuster, whether it's in the field or on the phone with a desk adjuster for a supplement or whatever, remember that it's not their fault, but they are predispositioned to put up a wall against you, okay? They're expecting you to be like the nine other contractors they met today who were total a-holes, okay? And so give them a chance to get over that and realize that you're not one of those people. Give them some space, be nice to them, talk to them, and that's gonna go a long way, okay? I actually just talked to a salesman recently who was having trouble with the supplements. And it actually, well, I have a couple things to talk about. We'll talk about him first. But he's asking for certain things, but not in the right way. And he, I'm, he was having trouble basically understanding why he's having trouble with getting these line items approved and I'm able to get them approved or other roofers he's seeing, you know, in the group are getting those things approved and whatever. And one thing that I explained to him was this. We're both asking for the same things but the way in which we ask for them is what's gonna really determine whether we get the results that we want or not. Here's what I mean. Okay, you're in the grocery store. You're going down the cereal aisle. There's an old lady kind of in your way. You can either say, excuse me, ma'am, I need to get by you. Or you can say, move, bitch, get out the way, all <laughs> right? Like ludicrous. You're both communicating the same thing, you're asking for the same thing, but you're asking for it in two very different ways. So you're gonna get two very wildly different reactions, okay? So we forget when we're working with adjusters, that's actually a sales process, you guys. Don't take that for granted. Adjusters are people. So when you approach them like people, like you would with a customer, you're gonna get way further than if you approach it as a combative situation. Okay, so just remember, like you would never be demanding and, and angry and forward and finger pointing and stuff like that with a customer to get a contract signed, would you? Of course not. You'd never call your customer stupid or like demand that they sign a contract and all that stuff because that's not how you get the customer, okay? Okay, you gotta kill them with kindness, all right? You get more flies with honey than vinegar. Same thing with adjusters, okay? On no planet ever has anybody been shaking their fists, telling the adjuster they're stupid and they're breaking the law and they need to pay for this because you're a general contractor, whatever. That has never worked. An adjuster, I guarantee you, on this planet has never said, you know what, Mr. Roofer, I'm glad you've got that Hague certification and you're right, I am an idiot. Why don't I give you that OMP? That's not how it works, you guys. So remember, adjusters are people they're happy to work with you within their limitations because remember, they've got a job to do too. They have bosses as well. So you need to be able to A, show them that you're not like everybody else. You're there to help them do their job and to see how both of you can work together to get the things that you need on that claim approved within their limitations, like what they're able to actually do for you. And that's gonna get you a lot further. And actually, I spoke on the phone a couple days ago with uh, a lady who had been an adjuster for 15 years, got tired of doing that, switched over, and is now working for a storm restoration company. 
And she actually was on, some of you guys may have been on this, some of you may have not, but I run every now and again like a $7 webinar about what we do with supplements to increase our claims by up to 99%. And she actually was on that. And she got on the phone with me and she said, you know what, Becca, I have to tell you something. I've been an adjuster for 15 years. I can argue anything in an abrasive way. She's like, I know the rules. I know the facts. I know Xactimate inside and out. I know insurance policies. I stay up to date. I still renew my, my license for adjusting every single year. And I know the rules. I'm still having a hard time communicating with my adjusters to get what I want. The thing that stuck out to me the most was the approach that you were using with that email and the conversations you were having with those adjusters because that right there is the golden ticket. She goes, when I was an adjuster, I was being called by roofers all damn day, every damn day. And I, when I, as soon as I saw it was a message from a roofer, I was already pissed off. I was ready to say no. I was looking for reasons to say no. Had I been able to work with somebody like you who approached supplementing or claims the way that you're showing people to do it, that would have been a brush of breath of fresh air. I would be happy to work with roofers that approve, you know, approach me that way. So you guys, that is just, that's a huge, um, great illustration and demonstration, real life. Somebody who dealt with this stuff for 15 years and they said, had I been approached this way, I would have been much easier to work with. I would have been very pleasant. So I really want you guys to remember it's not just about the black and white, the items that we're asking for. It's not about the items sometimes. Yes, we do teach you items that are easier to get approved. But most importantly, it's about how you are approaching that adjuster, how you're talking to them. So guys, it's really simple. Just be nice. Treat them just like you would any other customer, okay? Because at the end of the day, you're selling them on why they should approve the things that you're asking for. So I hope that helps. Um, try not to lose your temper. I know that it can be very frustrating sometimes, especially with some insurance companies and some adjusters, and not all of them are going to be cool, but give them a chance to see that you're not like everybody else, and I guarantee you you're going to get better results from it.